Hi everybody, Bob here. Today's workout is called Posterior Chain Exercises for Seniors. Your posterior chain is the chain of muscles in the back of your body, from the top of your head to the heels at the bottom. And there are a lot of posterior chain muscles, but we're only going to highlight five of them. So we're going to introduce to you five main exercises. They're very important. We're going to deal with the traps, shoulder area, the lats, mid back, the lumbar spine, low back, the glutes in your bum, and the hamstrings on the back of your legs. Let's start with a warm up. We'll end up with a stretch. Let's get busy. The trapezius muscles. If you don't have a garden pole like this one, go get one. I don't mean today, but go get one. They're very inexpensive and they're perfect for doing the shoulders. You could use a broom, just take the end off it, or some kind of a walking stick if you have a long one. Because the idea behind this is that it has to be long enough so that your arms can go way, way, way out to the sides. Because when you lift it up and bring it behind your back, If you have a shorter pole and you try to do that, you won't be able to do it. You gotta get your arms really wide. You can pause me right now and go and get yourself a broom or a, a walking stick or a garden pole, or you can just watch. And when you get one, then you can do it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is pick it up. I'm gonna stand in neutral, mountain pose, athletic stance, perfect posture for me. And I'm gonna lift the pole from my belly button up right over my head with my arms really wide. You can go very, very slowly to do this or a little faster, but just make sure that your arms are straight and they're not bent at the elbow. The feet are shoulder width apart and you're warming up the shoulders a little bit for something a little bit more complex. Remember the shoulders are a large flat muscle they begin in the back of your neck and come down over top of your shoulders at the front, but mainly at the back. They cover your scapula or your shoulder blades. You use this muscle to walk forward and back. You use it to rotate, that means twisting from side to side and you use it to stabilize yourself so that you can do other things with your shoulder. And one more. Hold it at the top. Just take it back. Keep your arms straight and see how far you can go. Maybe it's just to here and then come back to the top. And as I go down behind, I can feel my scapula contracting or the blades are moving together. I'm focused on what I'm doing. I'm thinking about my back and especially my shoulder blades coming together. Now I'm gonna go a little further. You try it too, there should be no pain. Ultimately, if you do this regularly and you do it enough with enough reps over and over again, you might be able to get down to your low back because ultimately I'd like you to go all the way back to your belly button and all the way back to your lumbar spine. But you only go as far as you can go at the moment. No pain. Take your time. You have a rotator cuff in that shoulder, which you could damage if you're not ready for this. So you just go as far as you can. That's why slow is better. Then you can tell if any pain is coming. And if it is, you go back to where it isn't. Good. One more. 
Now I'm doing about 10 of these. So here we go. Grab it again, put it in front of your body. So now I'm going to bring it up so that it's higher on one side and lower on the other. I'm still standing still. Feet are shoulder width apart. This is a little bit of a rotation. That's what we're heading for. A twist of sorts so that our trapezius muscle will be ready for when you tw twist and you're not thinking about it. Okay, so here I go. I'm going to bring it behind me and in front of me. Make a circle. My arms are as straight as I can get them. I'm holding really, really wide on the garden pole. Working my back. My major trapezius muscle plus a lot of other muscles in the posterior chain. Let's go the other way. So it's in front, wide grip, and then it's behind. Keep the arms straight. If you can only do a little bit, that's okay. Our next muscle in the posterior chain is the latissimus dorsi. Latissimus dorsi. Lots of people refer to them as the lats. And they're a fan type of a muscle. Underneath your shoulders, toward your low back, right up in here. Latissimus or lats, dorsi. And we're going to do a push-pull exercise today to work the latissimus dorsi and you should add some external weight to your routine so i like to start off with water and water in about this size of a bottle it weighs about a pound maybe two pounds that's perfect so i'm going to use the water bottle today to do the lats and um, I think before I do, though, I should have a little sip. And I'm going to drink both of them before this routine today is over. So let's just have a sip. Push-pull. Lats. So I'm going to stand in mountain pose, athletic stance, feet shoulder width apart. The best posture I can get, right? I'm going to put my arms at goal posts, right angles at the elbow. And I'm just going to push overhead, get them straight, and pull them back to the goal post. That's a push and a pull, and a push and a pull. And you've done this before if you've watched any of my videos anyway. So this time, as I push up, I'm going to lift up one leg. So I have to lean onto that supporting leg and get my balance, and then push, whoops, pull, push, pull. So I might as well work the bottom of my body while I'm working the top, the push-pull. Uh, hey, you know what? When I push my knee up, I pull it back down with my foot. So I've got a push-pull going in both places, upper body and lower body. Make sure your arm comes just to right angles like that. Push, pull. Push, Pull. If I hurry along here, it's easier because gravity pulls my legs and my arms down. So I'm going to try slowing down here. Push. Pull. When I do it slower, push. Pull. I'm in control, not gravity. Push. Stop halfway. Pull. Push. Pull. Most, if not all, push-pull movements are working your mid-back or your latissimus dorsi. Push, 
Oh. Now it's time for the lumbar spine, the low back. When I do this exercise, I have to be down on the floor, so I gotta make sure I have some kind of a mat or a carpet or something to protect my knees and my other joints because I am getting older and sometimes they ache. So the first thing you're gonna do is get yourself into the table position. So I have to make sure that my, my arms and my legs are shoulder width apart. But I'm kneeling down here and my hands are below my shoulders. I better move my hips and my legs back a little bit, not too much. Just make sure your, your uh, back, your lumbar spine, is pretty flat. Of course it has that natural curve to it. You don't want to exaggerate that. Just let it be the way it is. But it should be um, pretty flat back there and my hands are with the fingers spread apart of course, you know, are there um, below my shoulders and my arms are in front of my legs and my um, hips are above my knees. So it's hard for me to see my back, but I think it's pretty flat up there. And I think I'll take one of my water bottles, one of my weights, and I'll just lie it, make sure the lid's on tight. I'll just lie it in my low back, my lumbar spine there. Because if I decide to um, do any movement and change that natural curve in my back, the bottle will fall off my back. I don't want it to fall off my back. I want my lumbar spine curve to be just the way it is when I'm in neutral. Okay? But I am going to keep my head in neutral looking down. I'm going to take my right arm and lift it up and make it straight and point with my fingers and reach with my hand and make sure that that bottle of water doesn't fall off my back. And I just breathe normally and maybe hold it for five. And then I try the other side. If I have to adjust my hips to keep my back flat, I do. Make sure my arm is as far out as I can get it with my fingers spread and reaching. Good, that's about a five count. Let's try the leg. When I take my leg, say the right one, and reach out behind, I have to make sure I don't Point with my toe. I want to point with my toe, but I don't want my leg to come up too high because that changes the arch in my back. So I could keep my toes on the ground or I can lift them up, up the leg up a little bit for about a five count. The water's still there. And then the other leg, straighten it out, reach with the toes. And you can lift it up a little bit, but not too high because we don't want the water to move and we don't want the arch in our low back to be any more than it, what it normally is in neutral. Good. So you can go through that series there again if you want, or you can take the right arm and reach out and take the opposite leg and reach out. This is level two. You can do one arm, one leg at a time. It doesn't matter what order or you can do the opposite arm and leg together for about a five count. Let's try the left arm and the right leg. Point the toe, reach with the fingers. Keep the head down in neutral. The water's still there. It's about a five count. Okay, that's level two. And then level three, you might never get here, but I hope you will if you practice this enough. I'm gonna reach out with my arm on the right and my leg on the left. The water's still there. And then I'm going to make a little square in the air with my toe in the air and with my finger that's in the air. And I have to really concentrate on this one. Just a little tiny square or rectangle in the air. A little one. Hey, the water's still there. It's pretty good. I don't know if I, I drew that or not, but I was trying. Here comes the arm and the leg. Water's still there. Reach with my finger and my toe and draw a little square in the air. Boy, that's really working the brain. And I make about five of those. Your gluteus maximus muscle, the big muscle. You have a gluteus minimus muscle in your bum too, but we're just gonna work the gluteus maximus, the big part of our bum. And it's really interesting because we're going to do the squat to work that. Now the squat is like famous. It's almost, if not more famous than the push-up. 
it's um, uh, an exercise that probably works most of the major muscles in your body. I'm going to start here because I was down. Might as well start here. So I'm going to get my hands wherever I need to put them. But I'm going to get my feet flat on the ground and get my bum off, off the, uh, the rug. Hmm. That's interesting. So I'm pushing with my arms behind my back. They're representing, or at least they're supporting my erector spinae tube muscles that run down on either side of my spine. When I put my arms back here, they're acting like erector spinae muscles. My hands are spread apart. They're close to the body. My feet are flat. And I'm going to lift my bum up. I'm just trying to get up so I can do a squat. Maybe if I can get my bum up, I can get my heels underneath my body a little bit more and then push with my fingertips so I can get into this low squat position. So my legs are bent. My feet are shoulder width apart. I'm still holding on to the uh, rug to keep my bum off the, the mat or the rug. Yep, I'm going to try to get one arm forward. The other arm forward. Yes, this is all part of the squat exercise today. If you don't like this, just get up the safest way possible and then I'll meet you up in the vertical position. But here I go. Oh, holy cats. Slowly come up. Right, so now I'm, I'm standing in mountain pose again. My feet are shoulder width apart. My toes are straight ahead. My shoulders are down and relaxed. My head is being pulled up to the ceiling, my chin is tucked in, all that stuff. We learned that last week. And I'm just going to push on the outside of my feet as my knees come forward and raise my arms so that they're parallel to the floor and sit in the chair that isn't there and stand up. That's pretty easy, right? So I'm pushing on the outsides of my feet that way, pushing my knees forward gently making sure that they're over the middle of my feet as I lift my arms up and I sit in the chair that isn't there. And again. And again. Now you keep going, but I'm going to turn sideways so you can see me. Here we go. And again. Now my head is up. I can see across the room if there was a TV over there, I'd be able to see the TV. Keep going. Just a few more. And the last two. You could use a chair. I have a, a couch here, but you could have a hard chair stand pretty close to it and come down and actually sit in it and then come back up. Make sure the chair doesn't move. Make sure you know where it is. And then come the muscles on the back of your legs between your bum and your knee, the hamstrings, everybody's hamstrings seem to be tight these days. I wonder why. Could it be sitting like this in front of a television, a car, a steering wheel, or maybe a computer? Yes. Or could it be uh, sitting like this and not moving most of the day? Yes. But let's not worry about that. Let's just have another swig. Where's that other bottle? So here's my water. Notice how I just bent over to get it? See, my, my knees are bent a little bit, but I'm, my back's coming down and it's flat, and I can't see the TV. I can't see anybody if they're standing in front of me. I'm busy trying to pick up the water. That's the deadlift right there. And you know, a lot of us, because we don't do very many squats and we don't lower our hips down and straighten our head up to get the water, because we do it this way, or we're picking weeds in the garden or picking vegetables or whatever. We do deadlifts. So we're going to work the deadlift. I'll show you how to do it. I'm just going to stand in neutral here. 
don't worry if you can't see my head because I'm coming down. So when I read the words of the water, I better bring the water close to me. Because when I do the deadlift, my arms are going to stay close to my core, to my body. They're not going to be out here. Oh, and I'm not going to worry about my knees too much, but I, I will be bending my legs at the knees just a little bit. But this, a deadlift is not a squat. A deadlift is a deadlift. And a deadlift works the hamstrings. And the hamstrings are most um, at work when they're straight. So here I go. I'm going to lower my body down, push my bum back, my hips back. And then I, my head is coming down, but I want to look up at least a little bit. Okay? Look ahead of myself a little bit. Push my hips way back. Keep going. There's the water. Now I straighten up. And I'm going to put the water back down the same way. Keep it close. Not this way. Don't reach way out. That's going to compromise your back. So I'm just going to take the water or whatever it is. And I'm going to bend a little bit at the knee if I have to. Or I can keep them straight. And lower my body. Looking out there somewhere maybe. Yeah. But as long as I... Keep the water or the weight close to my body, and I'm halfway bent, right? Upside down now, and my hips are back. The natural curve in my spine has disappeared a little bit, but it's still there. And I come back up. Don't get big barbells and big heavy weights and start doing this. Don't even use water if you don't have to. Just bring your arms in front of your body a little bit and lower them to the ground. Remember at the beginning when we did the golden eight warm up, one of the exercises was this. We brought our arms out to the side, brought them overhead and then reached down like this as we came down. Well that was kind of like a deadlift. And I'm just going to keep the arms dangling in front of my body and I'm going to bend, push my hips way back. So from the top of my head here to the tailbone, I want it to be really, really, really stretched out and I want to be uh, flat the best I can, maintaining my natural arch a little bit. So here I am, keep the arms close to the body when I come up and come up slowly and here I go again. The only reason I'm suggesting that you practice this is because I'm afraid that you won't practice the squat and the next time you go to pick something up you'll automatically do it the deadlift kind of way and if your low back isn't strong and if your hamstrings aren't strong especially your hamstrings you're going to hurt your low back. The stretching part of posterior chain exercises for seniors today is going to involve the floor and I'm just going to do one stretch and it's my favorite and it works my back okay from the top of my head all the way down to my heels there's lots of different posterior chain stretches you can do and you probably have your own favorite but this is my favorite it's a yoga pose so I'm going to get into my table position again here. And I'm going to make sure my knees are shoulder width apart. My hands are shoulder width apart. My hands are below my shoulders. My knees are below my hips. I'm going to take my feet and put one on top of the other. It doesn't matter which one. Okay. And then I'm going to take my arms way out in front. And I'm going to move my knees wider apart. Making room for my bum and my hips and everything to go into that space. And I notice, come back up, notice that my arms are always straight and I have reached way out in front here. I'll back up a little bit so you can see. I've reached way out in front here. One foot on top of the other, knees wider. And I slowly push my hips back and bring my armpits toward the floor 
Holy cats. I can feel that in my shoulders. That's my traps. I can feel that in my lats. Mid-back. I can feel that in my lumbar spine, my low back. I can feel that for sure in my bum, my glutes. And I can feel that in my hamstrings when I come back up and straighten my feet out there and bring my belly to the floor or at least close to the floor and look up. My legs are now straight, my hamstrings are being stretched and this is called the cobra. So the cobra, as I bring my hips back, I put my feet on top of each other. I didn't move my knees and I didn't move my palms. And this is the resting child. Just do one more cobra. Straighten out my, my feet there. Belly button to the mat, maybe. Look up. Okay, now I'm going to stretch in the resting child position. Right here. Nice long stretch. If you don't like this straight up out over your um, head there, you can bring your arms to the side. Three, 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 three. That way. If you don't like that position, you can bring them way, way behind you, close to your legs, that way. Just keep those hips way down toward your heels. This is the resting child stretch, strike a pose. How long do I hold it? Well, you can hold it for 20 seconds and then relax by coming up. And when you're ready, you can go back into it and hold it for another 20 seconds. And then relax. And then hold it for another 20 seconds. Or you can hold it for 60 seconds. Or you can hold it for 2 minutes and that would be perfect. If you're going to stretch, a static stretch held for a longer period of time will give you more benefit. Your muscles will love you for it. There'll be no cramping that day if you hold the stretch long enough. Okay, I'm going to come up slowly. Move my arms, straighten my legs, turn over so I can sit down and have another drink. Everything slowly. Where's my water? So there's your stretch or your strike a pose. Resting child. Now, this is the drink up portion of the workout. This is where you drink the rest of the water that you were trying to drink throughout the workout. This is where you reflect on what you did. Even if you don't do the workout with me, or in a class at the Y or somewhere. Make sure you at the end reflect. Sit and drink your water and think about what you did. So here's your homework. Your homework is to remember the five main muscle groups in your posterior chain. Remember the traps, the lats, the low back, or the lumbar back, the bum muscles or the glutes and the hams or the hamstrings. Hamstrings, glutes, lumbar, lats, traps. That's your homework. Remember those. See you next time.